Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. I did hear something funny at work today, speaking of Deadpool. You know how Deadpool introduced the concept of anchor beings? Yeah. Yeah. Harambe was our anchor being. Oh, shit. I can see that. Oh, shit. Oh, that makes so much sense. Our timeline's yeah. deteriorating. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, Harambe, Harambe was our anchor beam. Oh, fuck. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the fire pit. I am Dan, mutant codename Gross, and we welcome you to a special episode. No, no, not selection section, that's coming soon, but a special fireside chat, not seen since The Flash. And just like that film, we're going to dive into the multiverse and discuss a current movie that's in the theaters right now. And to let us know what we're watching, I'll send things over to Tom. Thank you, Dan. I'm Tom, mutant codename Contrarian. Actually, I don't really think it should be contrary. Um, if you want to be actual about it. I was going to go with crabass, but I decided to go with contrarian. Contrarian here. And tonight on this special episode slash edition of Fireside Chats, we're going to discuss and go over the latest in the MCU and the latest slash last in the 20th Century Fox line of mutant films, Deadpool and Wolverine. We'll laugh, we'll cry, and we'll give spoilers galore. So you've been warned. And now, to give us some information and box office numbers, I'll send it over to Josh. Woo, 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 mutant powers. Wow. Thank you, Tom. Josh here. Mutant code name Seltzer Velour. <laughs> No. As mentioned no. tonight. Fucking add something to it, and I'm tired of it. I come up with these witty names, and he just adds to it. Best two years of that guy's life. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he loves us. This is why he loves us. Thank you, Tom. Josh here. Mutant code name Aqua Seltzer. <laughs> no. Velour. It's worse. It's worse. Thunder. It's worse with every take. Just do it. Just go. <laughs> and as mentioned, tonight we're discussing Wolverine and Deadpool. I'm um, actually, it's Deadpool and Wolverine, actually. Not to be a contrarian. Hey, hey, Dan writes these, and I read them as written out of respect for the author. But you don't read them as written <laughs> because you add things to it. So trying to get on that sweet Marvel gay train... We're maybe going to try this algorithm thing first in math. How's Joshbot coming along? <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, the movie was released July 26, 2024. It's only been in theaters a few weeks at this recording. It had a budget of around $200 million. And as of this recording, it's got a box office of $1.03 billion with a B. So it's got a Rotten Tomatoes critic score of 78% with an audience score of 95%, whoop whoop, and an IMDb score of 8 out of 10. So, Deadpool and Wolverine. Apparently it was going to be called Deadpool and Friend. I don't know. I'm just trying to steal stuff from Dan. Premiered. I mean, you might as well. At number one. The damn script that I wrote, so you might as well just go ahead and do my bit too. I can. Just let me load up the IMDb real quick. Best two years of this guy's life. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are making my editing job so easy right now. <laughs> so, anywho, Deadpool and Wolverine had a opening weekend of $211 million domestic. It opened in 4,210 theaters and obviously came in at number one. So, I know you guys can answer the next question that I would have normally asked, but what was number two is Twisters. So, now I'm going to ask you what was number three coming in at $14.5 million? Ooh. That's a, I'm trying not to look at IMDb or box office mojo. I'm trying to go off the cuff. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Was it Maxine? Or was it Longlegs? No. Nigel? What was number three? Yes. Because number two is Twisters. Okay. Number three on July 26, 2024. Yep. The weekend Deadpool premiered. 
Jesus, it was just a month ago or less than a month ago, and I can't. It was like wanna, three weekends I'm drawing ago. A, I'm drawing a blank. I'll give you a hint. It was an animated movie. Inside Out Two? No. Was it Despicable Me Four? Yes. Okay. Oh, I thought that movie had not yet come out. I thought it was still coming to theaters. It's been out for a month. It's on its fourth week of release. Wow. My finger is nowhere near the box office pulse anymore. Holy cow. That's what happens when you turn it into a monthly podcast, Tom. Uh. Best two years of his life. (laughs) But yes, Deadpool and Wolverine just dominated the box office. It grossed, like I said, $211 million. Number two was Twisters at $34 million. Jesus. Yeah, Deadpool Wolverine was crazy because it's already been out for three weeks. It's already grossed over a billion dollars. Yeah, but $211 million its opening weekend. Yeah, that made its budget back in two days. Yeah, Damn. thereabouts. And what's awesome is like most of the time they start cutting theaters. They've actually increased the theater count from its opening weekend by 120 theaters. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the uh, highest grossing rated. Uh, rated r film right now too yeah yeah it wasn't deadpool the first one also the highest grossing rated r film when it first came out yes i believe well no no no. um there's actually a joke in deadpool 2 or people talk about him in the same vein as jesus passion of the christ deadpool because passion of the christ was a highest r rated movie yes yes okay i got that joke okay so deadpool really is marvel jesus yeah jesus literally literally jinx uh, did you didn't we didn't say it at the same time we did on my end anywho interesting it is not the highest grossing film of the year yet yet jinx you so you were, were in sync with, no you were in sync yeah. with me on that one no my i've got the good mic uh, you you're yeah, on you know what you know what so. um that one wasn't in sync so i'm just gonna say bye 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 stop the joke it's dead that's I also relevant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> okay, so Deadpool and Wolverine right now, after its third weekend, is uh, number two for the domestic year 2024, just under $500 million. The top grossing movie of this year so far is Inside Out 2 at $636 million. So far. So far, I don't know if Deadpool and Wolverine will beat it because it had a 55% drop in its first weekend and it had a 44% drop to its second. Like, even if it sustains where it's at, it would still take four weeks for it to uh, get 200 more million dollars. So honestly, I don't see it overtaking Inside Out 2. Just the experiences that I've had working with box office stuff. Because yeah, yeah. it tends to drop 50%, 40 30 and then it just eventually levels out to until it's making like $100,000 a month. Yeah, plus Inside Out 2 is a PG. kid's film. Yeah, it's a PG film. So you got the you got the parents and the kids. So that always does better than an R-rated film. Yeah, well, just put it into perspective. It had a 34% drop its first weekend. So it went from $150 million to $100 million in its second weekend. Whereas Deadpool was... 54%. It went from 200 million to 96 million on its second weekend. Mm-hmm. So I do not see it overtaking it, but I see it getting close. It could, it could. But um, that's really all I've got for the box office. Thompson, to you with the production. Please keep it under five minutes. Uh, we'll see about that, Josh. So, Deadpool and Wolverine. Tagline, everyone deserves a happy ending. Sex joke, if, if you didn't get the double entendre there. This is a classy movie. Summary. A listless Wade Wilson toils away in civilian life with his days as the morally flexible mercenary Deadpool behind him. But when his homeworld faces an existential threat, Wade must reluctantly suit up again with an even more reluctant Wolverine. We take for granted that everyone knows comic book heroes and such now, but for those internet historians who have no idea, Deadpool is a comic book character created in the early 90s during the extreme era of comic books. 
um, Deadpool real name Wade Wilson was made basically as just a one-off character but became almost instantly popular with his sense of humor breaking the fourth wall tragic backstory and healing factor plus his pretty unique look so now 30 years later he is arguably one of the most popular characters in comic books today and probably That's- just real quick one of the only major characters created during that dork dark age of comics of the mid 90s that kind of still survive to this day yeah it's funny too i was listening to a podcast about comic books i don't want to step on your trivia and such nigel i don't know how much you're going to talk about it but when he premiered um he was not the focus character he was just like one of three um i think shatterstar was supposed to be the big breakout star Mm -hmm. and um you know 30 years later no one's really lining up to see a Shatterstar movie. No, <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah, so popularity being as it was, it was inevitable he'd get a movie. And Deadpool and Wolverine is a third and possibly final film of the Deadpool saga. As noted, the Merc with the mouth has given up the mask and the murder and settled down to a life of car dealerships and mediocrity. And also, for whatever reason, his girlfriend, who was the emotional crux of the previous film and who he had to use literal time travel shenanigans to save, have broken up because Disney is allergic to on screen relationships. Well, I don't get Disney anymore. Why do they never have relationships in their movies? I don't get it. Anyways, his life is flipped, twist, turned upside down when the Time Variance Authority from the Loki Disney Plus series kidnaps him and says, hey, we like the cut of your jib. And also how you cut things up real good. Would you like to join us? Also, we're going to destroy your entire universe because why not? So now he has to jump across the universe and the multiverse to find the one person who can keep his universe from being blipped, Wolverine. Much like Deadpool, Wolverine, real name James Logan Howlett, was also created as a one-off character uh, back in the 1970s. But because of his personality, his power set of healing factors and razor sharp claws and everything else resonated with fans to the point where 50 years later, he is arguably the most popular character in comic books today. And the reason why the X-Men films, hell, superhero films as a whole, became the box office behemoths that they are today. And then they went and killed him in his last film. But as any comic book fan will tell you, just because they're dead doesn't mean they're dead. So now him and Deadpool have to begrudgingly team up to show Disney that their franchise can still be profitable. I mean, save the universe from annihilation, unleashing a cavalcade of cameos, callbacks, and cunning quips along the way. Convoluted? Well, that's comic books for you. I'm going a little long with the backstory because in terms of production, there's not too much different from the previous Deadpool films. Most of the people involved with Deadpool and Wolverine you've seen in the previous one. This movie was produced by Maximum Effort Productions, though this time they do have some help from Marvel Studios, who produces, well, all the Marvel Cinematic Films. Maximum Effort Productions, it should be noted, is owned by Canada's second favorite, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Whoa, really? Yes. And coincidentally enough, happens to play Deadpool. Whoa. No. Yeah, what are the odds, right? Uh, yeah, this is the kind of information you're only going to get here on the Fire Pit Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. This right here is the only kind of information you're going to get. Or this is the only place to get that information, I should say. We are the true insiders here. 100%. Joining Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool number three is the star of the Broadway musical The Book of Mormon and Australia's favorite Hugh, Hugh Jackman, reprising his role as the titular Wolverine. Wait, 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 the guy from Kate and Leopold? The very same, Josh. Nice. (laughs) <laughs> Here he is reprising his role as the titular Wolverine, whom he's played since the first X-Men film back in the 90s, and whom Disney will probably find a way to keep playing Wolverine long after he's dead. Also returning to the set are the screenwriters from the previous Deadpool films, Rhett Reese, Paul Wernick, and, of course, Ryan Reynolds. And joining them as writer of the Robot Chicken TV series, Zeb Wells, and coming in both as writer and director is Sean Levy, who as well as helming such hits as the Night at the Museum trilogy 
has experience directing Ryan Reynolds in both The Adam Project and Free Guy, as well as Hugh Jackman in Real Steel. Also, fun fact for you 80s and 90s kids, he got to start directing uh, The Secret World of Alex Mack. Anyone oh. remember that TV show back oh, in the day? Yeah, yeah. I kinda yeah, the, the girl with the bit. psychic powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved that show as a kid. As noted by Josh, the movie is still out in theater, so there's a lot of feedback still coming in. Right now, despite its high box office numbers, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine has garnered sort of mixed reactions compared to previous films, with IMDb reviews ranging from bad taste at its finest to worse than Green Lantern. Yeah. So in conclusion, Deadpool and Wolverine is a Deadpool film with all the Deadpool people that you've come to know and love, with Wolverine there to do what he does best, and Disney right in front to catch all the Deadpool cash that comes in. So now that we know the production behind the film, Nigel, do we have any trivia? Quite a bit. I mean, spoilers, by the way. Tom mentioned spoilers in the uh, initial rundown of all this, but yes, there will be spoilers. Mm -hmm. Um, so right now, if you haven't seen the movie, it, it, just pause this episode, go see it, and then unpause. Um, I'm going to talk about some things about Deadpool, both the movie and the comics. You did kind of mention that it was originally written to be just like a one or two issue villain, like a villain, mm-hmm. basically of, of the comic equivalent of a villain of the week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was just an assassin that was hired to kill Cable. In the New Mutants uh, in 1993, his costume was kind of sort of based on Spider-Man's costume, but with more pouches, um, because that was, that's Rob Liefeld's thing. Oh and, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Li- yeah, Liefeld's thing is he can't draw feet, and he can't. He draws for lots of pouches. So, yes. but he was one of like three characters in that issue. Another one was like a character named Gideon, and another one was a character named Domino. And like Domino is really the only one that anyone even remembers after Deadpool because Deadpool and her kind of have a thing in the comics. So she, yeah, yeah, been yeah. For a while. Also, I, she was in two, like she was in Deadpool two. Yeah. Yeah. But, she was one of the only survivors of X factor in that movie. X- yeah. Of course. X- oh, excuse me. You're X- right. Force. Yes. Force. Yes. 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 Tom. Horse sticks. I have the most nutrients and vitamins and nutrients of any other part of the horse. I know you lick your lips just thinking about it. Am I right? Not me. I'm the, I'm, I'm the only one. I'm the only... <sighs> but yeah, so he was he was originally just a one-off, two-off character in the New Mutants, uh, defeated rather easily by Cable. Um, but then he came back. He was just it was retcon that he has this healing factor that pretty much allows him to hyper heal from just about any wound. And then he started to kind of tweak the character a little bit, make him slightly more insane. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they really leaned into the fourth wall breaking and the pop culture references and all the other stuff. And then that's why he became the Merc with the mouth. And so he became very, very popular. And now I would say, as I mentioned earlier, that he is probably one of the only characters from that particular age of comics that a lot of comic book fans called the dork age of comics because it was like everything had to be extreme. And, you know, that was when Image Comics was getting popular around the same time frame. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 you know, and like, you know, I remember one of the issues, not an issue of Deadpool, but an issue of like an image comic was like red blood versus blood red. This blood's for you. Like oh, like, God. Like, yeah, I remember like, that. Like, it's, the most, it's the most 90s thing to ever 90s. Like, what's this character's superpower? He's got guns. Yeah, yeah. Big guns, pouches, uh, ninjas. Everyone was a ninja, had swords, katanas, which like Deadpool was supposed to be a parody of all that. He uses guns. He uses swords. He's a martial artist. And also he's a parody of uh, Deathstroke from DC Comics. Because even his name, like Deathstroke's real name in Teen Titans is Slade Wilson and Deadpool's real name is Wade Wilson. You know, huh, so, I didn't know that. Yeah. And his mask is identical to Deathstroke's mask in the comics. Like if you look at Deathstroke's mask and look at Deadpool's mask, they're the same, except Deadpool's is painted red and black. He's a parody of Deathstroke. And that's what he was originally supposed to be written as. He was just a parody of Deathstroke. And he was supposed to be a one or two off character that was, you know, defeated by Cable at the end of New Mutants. And that was it. And then they brought him back like a year or so later. And then he just got super popular after that. Jimmy Chongas. Yeah. yeah. Jimmy Chongas breaking the fourth wall. Started having kind of like wanting to have a bromance with Wolverine really bad in the comics, which translates to the screen now. Yeah, that's that's Deadpool's kind of history uh, to just kind of expand on what Tom already put. But trivia about the movie I kind of wanted to go over. Hugh Jackman had said that he was done playing Wolverine after Logan, which honestly, if you never picked up the 
the claws again. That was a perfect ending to that character. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, that was perfect ending to the character and him and the director of that movie, they didn't want to ruin the ending of that movie, so to speak. Like they didn't want to like make it pointless. So Ryan Reynolds said that, no, they're going to be very respectful to Logan. And then they explained the concept of the multiverse to him and how like this could be a different Wolverine or this could take place before Logan and all this other stuff. And those things did kind of turn out to be kind of true. Mm-hmm, um, they mm-hmm. also literally desecrated the corpse of Logan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like first thing they did, but yeah, yeah, yes, you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, they immediately, literally desecrated the corpse of Logan um, in the most hilarious way possible. Um, so, to buy, 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 by NSYNC. To buy, 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 yes. Absolutely hilarious. The movie was basically kind of conceived as not just a fan service film for fans of Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, and Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, finally sharing the screen at the same time. It was also conceived as kind of a love letter to early comic book films, not part of the MCU. So the concept of the film was that even though not all of these movies are great, they're important, and people really did work on them and put a lot of effort into it. It may not have it may not have always translated into either box office numbers or audience scores or review scores, but it's someone's art that needs to be respected. So mm-hmm. I kind of like that touch. And, you know, we've actually done that on this podcast. We've watched some really stinker films, but we've still kind of looked for something positive in it, like mm-hmm. or like something that we could kind of see the director really wanted to do. With the exception of Pathfinder. We found no good yeah. in the film. No, <laughs> yes. no, no. <clears throat> dead found... calm. Dead calm. Yes. Oh, actually, we did find some good no, stuff we, in Dead Calm. Yeah. The ending. The ending of Dead Calm. The, the the flying baby through the windshield was unintentionally hilarious. Um, Killing of the dog. The only movie where I was happy that happened. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, you know, but we, we found some things to like about Dead Calm. We found some things to like about Aquaman. Um, we found some things to like about other stinkers that we've watched. But... I did like that kind of take on the film was it was like, oh, you know, this is a love letter, a thank you, a, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of a goodbye to the Fox universe, the Fox verse, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like Spider-Man No Way Home was kind of a love letter and a goodbye to the Garfield and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. And they got to go out in a blaze of glory. And this was Mm -hmm. kind of the same for the Fox verse. Like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man was very important to superhero films, but so was 2000s X-Men. And so was Daredevil. And so was Mm -hmm. Blade. Honestly, you know, you can make the argument that even before 2000 X-Men, Blade is the most important movie in the Marvel universe because without Blade, it really doesn't work. Oh, hands down. Hands down. Blade was the first comic book movie to really like be like, oh, they can actually do these straight without kind of making tongue in cheek references. Like we're making a comic book movie and we're ashamed that we're making a comic book movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I'm just saying. So, uh, some other bits of trivia I've got here. Um, did we want to touch on any of the, uh, cameos that we may or may not have missed? Oh, like we didn't talk about X 23 at all. And the upcoming part of the episode, spoiler, Right. We did um, record the second half last night, I promise. No, we didn't. Um, I am going to have such a throw editing this now. You really are. Yeah, uh, we could talk about some of the other cameos, although I did find one that uh, there was some like leaks about six, seven, eight months ago over who would be in the film. Leaks like Channing Tatum as Gambit. And so in order to combat the leaks, Ryan Reynolds started posting on Twitter under a different account other leaks that weren't real. <laughs> so just to kind of like throw people off. That mad lad. We mentioned his cameo, but uh, about a month ago or a month before the film's release, Wesley Snipes went on a public tirade on social media about marvel studios over the planned blade reboot that's having been in development hell you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so he went on this tirade about it about how like they should have just asked me to come back and they talk about they don't know what they're doing marvel studios is a joke um Mm -hmm. all this other stuff that was actually on purpose so that his so his appearance in the movie would be a big surprise. Oh, nice. yeah. yeah, it was definitely like you know the equivalent of I hate that guy, he sucks, and then you find out they're best friends. Yeah. Oh, I I I was totally worked by that. Holy shit! Yeah. Well played, guys. Yeah, in wrestling in wrestling terms, it was a work. He 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 was working the audience to make it seem like he was pissed and he hates Marvel Studios. And he might, but he's professional. And Wesley Snipes does need money. He owes a lot of money to be taxes. Um, <laughs> so, but he's 
that's why to show his his appearance would be a big surprise. Nice. What about X twenty three? I was surprised about X twenty three. I was shocked. I never saw that. I was coming. shocked she came back. Yeah, I was shocked. She I was back. shocked they put her in the freaking trailer. Did you see what was it? The third trailer it was very Wolverine centric. Didn't really touch on Deadpool at all. It was like one of those emotional trailers for Wolverine. No, I never saw. I I I guess I'm lucky. I kept myself in a Deadpool free bubble um i've got ad blockers up the wazoo so i was never getting any of those like forced movie ads or anything so aside from the teaser trailers um and the earlier parts and the little blips here and there i got none of that oh no there was uh i got the thing off of reddit like it became pretty obvious so to speak it was hard to avoid it and i lie to myself every time thinking it's not going to get spoiled by the trailer (laughs) <laughs> and i mean like every time mm-hmm. yeah no it's like the third trailer i want to say was all wolverine centric and it showed that x23 was in there i was hoping she would be in there but i was not wanting to be fucking uh spoiled by it mm-hmm. yeah i'm so you got that spoiled for you josh i actually was, it wasn't spoiled by that either because mm-hmm. well, i actually went into the film and, and the only cameo that was spoiled for me was spoiled by accident on a video game um was the uh chris evans is not captain america so hmm. you know that was that was spoiled for me, but I kind of had a feeling they were going to do that because I know they were hinting that Chris Evans was going to have a cameo in the film, and I was like, I'll bet he's Human Torch. Mm-hmm. I even thought that I was like, I'll bet he's Human Torch. Yeah. And then the only reason why I thought that is because, and I didn't know this was going to be a love letter to the Fox X Men movies, but I thought it would be kind of an, a homage to them because of the Deadpool and Wolverine aspect of it. And Fox had the Fantastic Four and the X Men franchises for a long time, so mm-hmm. that's why I thought it would be that. But uh, the last thing I want to talk about is if someone noticed a character was missing, this is going to be kind of dark, actually. T.J. Miller, who played Deadpool's best buddy, Weasel, in mm-hmm. yeah, the yeah, first yeah. two films. Uh, T.J. Miller was accused of sexual assault and involved in an incident where he made a false bomb threat. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds basically uh, did the uh, real-life equivalent of unfriending him and blocking him on Facebook. And he said he will not be involved in any future installments of the franchise. So if anyone was looking for Weasel... That's where he is, and if you're hoping Weasel shows up in the real Deadpool three or Deadpool four, whatever they end up calling it, no, <laughs> he'll be no. he'll be, he'll be no, recast. Probably not going to happen. Yeah, he'll no. be yeah, he'll be recast or he'll be uh, straight up not there. So, but I have some other trivia to talk about later on when we get our final thoughts and expectations and stuff in. I didn't want to take up too much time, but, but yeah, I just thought this was kind of an interesting movie. They had a lot of cool little callbacks to not just Deadpool the character, but the Marvel universe as a whole, and also the uh, Fox Marvel cinematic universe. So yeah, yeah. So moving on to expectations, that would be hey, it's me. So <laughs> my expectations. Uh, I will be honest. My expectations were relatively low going into this film. I have not been shy about voicing my displeasure and disgust with the current state of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, and I, I I wasn't keen on what Marvel or what Disney Marvel was going to do to Deadpool. I really enjoyed the first two films, especially the first one. So I was really kind of worried, like, they say they're going to make it rated R, but, like, are they really? Mm-hmm. Really, you, to, to be rated R, you just have to say fuck twice in a film. So, like, if they just do that, it's going to be rated R. So, like, is it really going to be rated R, or is it just going to be, like, an R that could have been a PG-13? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I was kind of worried that they wouldn't go far with it. And I will admit that the Disney jokes, the Disney self-deprecation jokes were pretty funny. Like, when he's telling Wolverine about the sacred timeline or whatever, and he was like, what? We can join the sacred timeline. And he decided, and he goes, I admit, it's 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 kind of rough right now. It's, we're, we're, we're admittedly coming into it at a pretty rough time. But, like, yeah. you know, I thought that was funny. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I like the whole, like, you know, like, he kept making reference, like, Kevin Feige tells us we can't do that. You know? Stuff mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Like, those were... We can't pretty, talk about cocaine. Yeah, we can't talk about that. Not at all. Not even a little bit. You know? Those were pretty good takes. But I, my expectations were pretty low. I was just afraid that it wasn't going to be like, I just was afraid it wasn't going to be Deadpool, you know? Yeah. Also, like Marvel's had this habit lately of just kind of like trashing characters for the sake of trashing them. And uh, I was like, I was really worried they were going to do that with Deadpool and or Wolverine. Mm -hmm. And um, they didn't. And actually, to Disney's credit, they treated the Fox Marvel films with a little bit of respect instead of just basically pretending like they never happened or they didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, they had like a, basically a whole love letter movie to it. So good on them. Yeah. My expectations were low, but, uh, 
I don't know. We'll do final thoughts in a minute because now I'm going into my thoughts on it. But yeah, my, my expectations were relatively low. Tom, what about you? I'm also with you there, Nigel. I, I remember seeing the first trailer and you just, you know, with the silhouette of Wolverine popping his claws cast over Deadpool. It's like, yep, they're digging this one up. They had no other options. They're desperate now. What's next? They're going to recast Robert Downey Jr.? Yeah, we'll see what happens. But my whole thing going into this, like, I didn't even know if I wanted to see it in theaters. It just, eh, for one, blatant trying to cash grab. Um, mm-hmm. they, they're gasping. They're losing all their bets with the standard Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it's like, okay, got to milk this cow, beat this horse. Um, plus, like you, Nigel, the reticence to go full hard arts. It was just like a... I mean, the first Deadpool proved that audiences want a hard R Deadpool, despite the you know, Fox Studios like, eh, I don't know, guys. Mm. Yeah, and I would say that Logan, I would say that Logan proved that audiences wanted a hard R Wolverine film. Exactly. But Disney being Disney is like, I don't know. It's made money for everyone else every other time. But will it make money for us, though? I don't know. So I wasn't expecting much. Maybe a pee pee poo poo joke or an F bomb here and there. But it would be tame compared to previous Deadpool films, that sort of thing. and Or just, at best, I was thinking it would be at the level of, say, um, Age of Ultron. Or, oh, not that bad. I'm not going to say I didn't expect it to be that bad. But kind of just one of your bog standard sort of deals. At worst, I was expecting it to be the Marvels. or Maybe at best, like, Thor 1. Yeah, yeah. At best, Thor one. At worst, Thor two. Yeah, uh, yeah, like, yeah. Although Marvel Phase Four has made me realize that maybe Thor two wasn't the worst MCU film. <laughs> but that's a discussion for another night. Go on, Tom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and then I saw some trailers and it's like, okay, it doesn't look like it's going to be hot garbage. It's still probably going to be garbage though. But a friend of mine convinced me to go see it in theaters, and I'm kind of glad he did. But I'm jumping ahead of uh, my um, final thoughts here. But going into it, as I said, like you, cautiously pessimistic, but hopeful. Reginald, what about you? What were your expectations going into this? Well, Deadpool and Deadpool 2, huge fans. Fucking loved them. A lot of people get over the whole Ryan Reynolds hype. Mm-hmm. I still think Ryan Reynolds is pretty fun. You know? Sure, yeah, sure. I think he's, I think he's No fine. one's ever he's saying he's, yeah, no, I'm yeah. not saying he's. Oh, I, know, like, I know I've seen a lot of people talking on Reddit where they're like, oh, I'm just so over Ryan Reynolds. It's like, oh, he's, he's the same person in every one of his movies. But I think Deadpool 1 was amazing. The opening fucking credits were hilarious. Yes. Mm-hmm. The writers are the real heroes here and just shit like that. So Deadpool three, I was worried they were going to fuck it up. Mm -hmm. Especially when I heard on the writer strike that they're going to be like, Hey, uh, yeah, they're not allowed to improvise. And I'm like, fuck this movie. Yeah. I didn't even know they weren't allowed to improv in this. Can somebody somebody explain to me as someone who's not part of the writer's union and doesn't understand unions all that much. Well, I understand what unions are for, but why wouldn't they be allowed to improvise? Because the scr- this is my understanding, and I could be wrong, so I probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But it constitutes writing during a strike, so scab work. Oh. Like the script was already the script was already wrote. Oh, okay. So they were working off of the script. So if they would have started doing some improv while the writer strike was going down. It would have been all like... Right, and sometimes in the course of making a film, sometimes a character improvs so much that the script is actually rewritten around the actor improving a lot of the lines. Uh, yeah. See example, see example uh, Iron Man 1. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, also, Transformers 2007. Shia LaBeouf started improving a ton of Sam's lines, and the script was rewritten to, in, to account for that. So, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay, I thought it was like after the strike had happened, there was new rules in place. Okay, that, okay go on, yeah. Josh. So that right there was kind of a flag for me, like mm-hmm. a yellow flag. I wouldn't say a red flag. It wasn't going to keep me from going to see the movie, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But it was just... Disney, I was kind of worried that they had promised 
air quotes promised mm-hmm. that Deadpool would still be a hard R. You know, it's going to be a rated R film. We're going to do this. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. But I was just, after hearing the thing about the writer strike and then having the Disney filters on it. Yeah. I was yeah. hopeful. Like when I went in, my expectation was I'm probably going to enjoy this film. The bar is exceedingly high. Mm-hmm. So at a bare minimum, I get to see Deadpool and Wolverine on screen. And there's going to be some fun jokes. So going into it, I was I was still excited. One of the first movies I'd actually been excited about going to the theaters about in a long time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I was pumped. I was looking forward to it, but I was not expecting it to be as good as uh, Deadpool 1 or 2. I, mean, I guess in the hierarchy of films, like going back to Thor 1 v Thor 2, where were you hoping to be as good as, but f- afraid that it was going to be as bad as? I don't put Deadpool in the same column as I would like Phase 1 Marvel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. From Deadpool 2, that one scene where he starts using his swords to cut the uh, bullets as be- his cable was shooting at him. Like, Phase 1 Marvel, they would have started like that, but instead they would have killed the guy who was shooting the gun. Mm-hmm. X-Men did this in X-Men Origins Wolverine, where Wade Wilson was cutting them all up and deflecting them as he was cutting it, taking zero damage. Mm-hmm. Deadpool does that, deflects the first two, and then gets shot to hell. <laughs> I forgot that scene. Yeah. <laughs> so you take those three examples. It's like I would put the serious one over here, X-Men here, and then Deadpool in its own column. They share the same spreadsheet, but when you sort by, they're going to come up under different filters. Yeah, I follow you. I follow you. So like, I knew it was going to be different. I knew the uh, fourth wall breaking was still going to be there. Mm-hmm. And I loved in uh, the, rig- the two, first two Deadpools, just how it's like he would break the fourth wall around other people mm-hmm. and nobody else would get it. Or mm-hmm. you just continue on your day type thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like this crazy guy doing crazy stuff. Yeah. Uh, plus, I think for me, I, I think knowing that everyone else that had been involved in the previous films helped uh, um, relieve some tension because we all saw what happened to community when it didn't have the same people coming in it could have easily happened here with deadpool yes is anyone else worried that with the success of deadpool so far disney's gonna mandalorian the whole thing to help them back yes one they have shown right now they have they have zero i have zero trust in them 100 Mm -hmm. percent. the next deadpool film will be terrible because disney can't they can't stop they cannot stop themselves from being like, you know what this needs? More meddling. Yes, you know? yes. Season one of Mandalorian was pretty good. I wouldn't say it was earth shattering. I know a lot of people really thought it was like groundbreaking and all that, but it was. No, it was I good. It, it was, was good. good enough. It you was know, good it enough. Was good. It was a nice little space western. Yeah. Even though it would, it didn't feature Jedi and it didn't feature any of the Skywalker kids or grandkids or descendants or whatever, it felt like it took place in the Star Wars universe. Like it feels like this could be happening at the same time as shenanigans mm. in the movies and then like season two you can see it starting to creep in a little bit you can see the disneyfication start to creep in a little bit and then by season oh, no, the disneyfication was like episode three of season two you know let's just admit it yeah, yeah. I, was, I was trying yeah. to be nice i was trying to be nice but yes the, the disneyfication starts season two mm. and then it's in full-blown effect by mando season three mm-hmm. and then the the spinoffs of book of boba fett and ahsoka and uh Oh my God. Like they just couldn't leave it alone. They just couldn't let these guys tell the story they wanted to tell in the way they wanted to tell it. So yeah. Cause I mean, it's like in season two of Mandalorian, they're all like, okay, um, you're going to have Luke Skywalker in here. Just FYI. Yeah. Really? But we've built this whole no, universe around Luke Skywalker. Of- shut up. Luke Skywalker, red five. Let's toss in a little bit uh, of Ahsoka Tano. Um, and just some other, Clone Wars stuff, but I need more references. Specifically, Luke Skywalker. Yeah, see, honestly, them introducing Ahsoka in Season 2 didn't bother me. What bothered me was the Luke jingly keys at the end of it, which is, I love that term, it's jingly keys. It's just to distract you from the fact that this sucks. And oh, I've never heard that phrase. But I'm- yeah, I got it from a YouTuber, uh, one of the YouTubers. I, I cannot remember who said it, and so unfortunately I cannot credit him, so I'm not going to steal it, but um, it was a it's a YouTuber that said it. 
but it's just jingly keys and it's to remind you that this actually sucks and it, or to make you forget that this actually sucks. I really mean to say. And so that's what the Luke Skywalker scene was at the end of Mando 2 was to re- just to make the audience forget that this is actually kind of lame. You know, so yeah, because it's like that final fight scene. Sorry, we're kind of tangenting a little bit. Everybody boasts about how badass it was. And I'm not going to lie. I thought it was fun at the time. But going back and re-looking at it, I'm like, A, the effects kind of blew on like Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And B, it wasn't as epic as the Vader scene at the end of Rogue One. Oh, yeah. Where Vader's just pounding peons off the walls and just yeah. destroying swaths of mooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the difference with that is, you know, Vader's a costume. They didn't have to do any CGI to make Vader look like he did in A New Hope. They just need to put somebody in a costume that looks like Vader's costume in A New Hope. Whereas Luke, you know, like, yeah, the de-aging special effects are nice now, but you can still tell. There was still some uncanny valley there. I can definitely tell that that's not Mark Hamill from 1985. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, we're tangenting a little bit, so... But yeah, no, they're going to milk this cow dead. Yeah, I'm just afraid yeah. that Disney is once again going to get the wrong message from this. They, they, I have no trust in them whatsoever because they've been doing it pretty much since Phase 4. Like, it feels like they let the Marvel Cinematic Universe play out the way they originally envisioned it when they mm-hmm. bought it because they did buy the Marvel Universe around, what, at the end of Phase 1? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think they, because I think Phase 2 on is Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, um, Avengers was the first one under the Disney mantle. Right, but the, but it was like pretty much already done before Disney bought the... Uh, yeah, the yeah, movie. that's the only reason it and, was... Uh, yeah, they had momentum on their side. They had momentum, and they had all these other characters and writers and directors that they kind of just let them do their thing. But like ever since Phase 4 ended, each Disney Marvel movie has gotten subsequently worse. Like, yeah. I can't think of one outside of Spider-Man No Way Home, and even that movie's got holes and flaws big enough to drive a Mack truck through. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, honestly, I didn't realize how flawed fa- uh, Mar- uh, Spider-Man was until I watched it at home. They actually have scenes that stop to hold for the applause. I'm like, wait, this, this doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> like, like, this is more fourth wall breaking than Deadpool could ever hope to be. But yeah, like all the other phase four of uh, phase four and phase five films and TV shows have been just at best meh. Mm-hmm. But at worst, terrible. Yeah, I, I was joking a minute ago. Like it's definitely put into perspective that Iron Man three and Thor two weren't the worst MCU films anymore. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're actually they're actually fucking watchable. So you know, like I'm really scared that Disney's going to get the wrong message from Deadpool and the success that this movie's had. And the next one's probably not going to be any good because there will be a next one as oh, long yeah. as Ryan Reynolds is alive and breathing. He, there will be a next one. And that is not to say I wish any ill on Ryan Reynolds. He is a gem and a treasure. He must be protected at all costs. I'm just saying, as long as he is alive and is willing to do this role, they will make Deadpool movies. You know, he'll outnumber the Rocky films and the Star Trek films here shortly. So well, not just Deadpool, but any other of the Fox ones that they're going to come out with. Blade, I think, is coming up next. And If it ever comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I don't like like the other characters that they have adopted from other stuff like i don't like what they've done with kingpin the mcu version of kingpin's not nearly as good as the netflix version of him and i know the netflix one was technically made under the mcu banner but it's just not as good that they were very hands-off with the netflix shows oh yeah very yeah. much yeah yeah and i know they're going to bring back john bernthal as the punisher and they're going to have a new season of punisher i'm afraid that's not going to be any good and i loved that show i mean shit just look at um fucking what was the one where they brought kingpin back was that that hawkeye show that yeah, wasn't they starring yeah, hawkeye? Yeah, yeah. hawkeye and then echo yeah 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 i didn't even watch echo like honestly i loaded up disney plus because my brother gave me his password and I'm all like, oh, Echo's out. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm going to watch Deadpool. Yeah, I didn't I didn't watch Echo either. And according to the numbers, no one did. So but um, no, it's like like legitimately fucking Netflix. The TV shows were awesome. Yeah. Except yeah. Defenders. Defenders suck. But Daredevil just did not live up to the hype for me in uh, She-Hulk. I mean, you just can't be wrapped in that awesome a show and be that shitty. He mm-hmm. said sarcastically, knowing that Dan loves that show. <laughs> I just, all I want to know, Josh, is I I, I want to know the version of She-Hulk you and Danielle watched. Because the one on Disney Plus is awful. But you and Danielle were like, oh, it's good. Uh, She-Hulk was really good. Which one? You guys watched a different version than I got to see. Oh, you got to subscribe to the Ultra Plus okay. edition okay. of Disney Plus. Okay. Is yeah. that the one with the actual funny jokes and... 
witty banter. Yeah, the good, and, C- okay. good CG, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Sure, because the CG in that show was worse than the Ang Lee Hulk movie of the early 2000s. So, and you notice that one didn't get a send off. Uh, so, I think know. people just forgot that one was there. It, I sometimes forget that movie was there. I keep for, I sometimes forget that, yeah, Edward Norton was like the first Hulk since Lou Ferrigno. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. It was Eric Bana. <laughs> like, Dude, yeah, I see Eric Bana nowadays, and I'm all like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's right. He was the Hulk at one point. Yeah. I was like, well, shit. <laughs> so I forgot. I forgot about that film. Everybody forgot about the film. You know, Nick Nolte's in that movie? Holy shit. Yeah. There's Hulk dogs, remember? Yeah, there's Hulk, there's dogs. Hulk dogs. Nick Fault Nolte turns into like Absorbing Man. It's kind of. Not good, but it's a, he's in that movie. But anyways, yeah. God, we should do a bad comic book journey someday. Anyways, yeah. Avengers on Wish. Oh, my God. Avengers on Wish. <laughs> we really should. We should do like 90s Captain America, the Ang Lee Hulk, and Blade Trinity. Not Blade 1 or even Blade 2, which Blade 2 is not good, but it's at least entertaining. Um, and we have to end with Avengers. <laughs> 1993. <laughs> I'm going to be busy that year, guys. <laughs> that's that's it. We're doing it. No more journeys needed. You guys just saw our selection section. That's what we're doing. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah, to answer Tom's question definitively, yes, Tom, I am afraid that Disney's going to get their claws in it and they're not. They're going to get the wrong message. No. And they, they don't learn the lessons. They don't look at what people want. They want Twister. I'm trying to segue into when Josh talks about Twister for like two hours, like he did the other day. Oh, that was yesterday, Tom. Did oh. it talk that long? It, it was about an hour. It's like we got, remember, we were talking about Twister for so long. It's like, why aren't we just recording the episode? We've been talking this whole time. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> well, is there anything else we want to discuss, fellas? Uh, was- nope. It's getting kind of late. So I'd say that uh, this was where we'll segue into the Tom Play the Music. Episode of the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and edgy 90s mercenary turned comic book icon, Tom! Maximum effort! Fourth wall! Kimmy Chungas! Ah, good old early 2000s pop culture. Timeless. And thank you for spending your time with us here at the Fire Pit. We just finished up our latest journey, so we're pulling over to the side of the proverbial road to take in the latest addition to superhero cinema, Deadpool and Wolverine. Only took them 32 years, but they finally brought these two together on the big screen. Honestly, I dare you to name a more iconic duo. It can't be done. I'm not counting those two. Or them. Okay, they're pretty good also. But speaking of pretty good, let's take a minute to hear some pretty good ads. I don't know about you, but I just can't wait to get into all those things that those ads told me about. Woo boy. But if you have a product that you think people will want to get into, or if there's something coming up that you want everyone to get in on, or if you just want to get the word out about some wild and crazy stuff, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line as well as the reason for your email whether it's to rent out some ad space spill the tea about some hollywood goings on or just ramble on about things worth rambling about and pop it into our inbox from there we'll read it trim it from its universe of origin Send it on an odyssey through time and reality to find a new anchor being to hold this world together. And never respond. Disney wound up buying it in the latest round of acquisitions and are... Rebooting its continuity in preparation for Marvel's Phase 7. 
I mean, I hear Greta Gerwig is set to direct, so could be worse. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Whoop! Sounds like there's another glitch in time and multiverse whatevers again. I gotta go find a cadre of variant me's with wacky backstories and crazy costumes with which to team up and get into hijinks and save the day. I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck! Ooh, I hope I get to team up with a Star Trek version of me! Engage! Go ahead. We'll just do um, talk about the movie now. Just go. Okay. Okay. Well, where's the <laughs> script? Where, where's, I'm useless without a script, guys. We know, Tom. We know. The writer strike has impacted us all. But no. Uh, so Deadpool versus Wolverine. You were saying it's very mid. It, I'm not disagreeing I, with you. Yeah, I'm like, it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. Don't like. Please don't come at me in the comments or whatever. I'm not hating on the film. Um, I know I've been one of Marvel's biggest critics as of late, and I'm sorry, but they've earned every bit of that criticism it's and I'm justified in saying all of it, but like, yes, you are be quiet. It's my thoughts. You can have your thoughts in a minute. Okay. Okay. I'm saying that I thought it was solid and fun, but also very mid. The story's got a lot of holes in it. <laughs> a lot of holes that in a lesser superhero film would have really derailed it. But the fact that Deadpool kind of gets away with breaking the fourth wall and kind of making jokes about the plot holes, it works, but um, yeah, but is that really, it's like the cute girl who's like bombing on stage, which is like, oh, oh my God, ouch, I just, I'm, I'm just, oh, I'm all over the place. And you forgive her because she's got tits. Is is that the same thing? It's like, it doesn't, doesn't make the performance any better. It's her calling out that, you know, she's doing a bad job. You know, it's not the best performance. We're just okay with it because it looks pretty. Is, is that the same thing? She's. Saying I'm a shitty film does not make it well. Deadpool's not a shitty film. I'm jumping ahead, but you yeah. get what I'm trying to say oh, here. Yeah, Dan, chew me out for like just even just, just uh, agreeing with you, but uh, just let Tom go. It's okay. Well, it's, uh, he was very loud, and oh, I, just I didn't need to be louder. Like, yes, just, okay. both of you just shout, and then I'll let you have the floor. Okay, sounds good. Haven't you guys ever watched C-SPAN? That's how they do it. Yeah, you're not wrong. You <laughs> just say it. No, I, I understand. I'm go just saying on, the go movie, on. I just thought the movie, okay, I, you know, just to summarize it, I thought the movie was fun, but it was also very mid. But also, Marvel has been such a dumpster fire lately that mm -hmm. a mid Marvel movie is, it entertained me. I, I didn't walk out going, oh my God, I can't believe I paid money for this. Like, I am glad I went to the theater on cheap night, but you know, I'm like, it was, it was pretty good. I don't know. I thought it was all right. It was nice to see the proper Wolverine costume on film. I got mm -hmm. excited for that. And I did love the line from Wolverine about his costume, where he said that Scott always wanted me to wear this and Jean and Beast and all of them, but I didn't want them to think that I actually wanted to be there. And mm. that to me was both a commentary on the character of Wolverine and a meta commentary on how Fox and Brian Singer treated the X-Men in the early 2000s. They mm -hmm. were under orders from Brian Singer and 20th Century Fox to not put the X-Men in their colorful costumes. They were told to put them in all black because they said that comic book fans really don't want to see that. I mean, if you look at the costumes at the time, up until like the Raimi Spider-Man, they were all kind of like either just latex plastic like the Batman one or just hideous spandex yeah like, but i well, i think but so i've spandex seen spandex was more in uh sorry dan but spandex was more in tv like i think that superhero costumes weren't that bad because like i'm putting 89 batman as the turning point for superhero films anything past that through the 90s was solid yeah like because was a superman 4 came out in 86 yeah 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 i think it was eight yeah was it really 86 yeah it was ah yeah, but even that costume, better than it what used to be like in the old TV shows, was still nothing compared to what Raimi produced in the Spider-Man film. And then you go forward, like Batman Begins, and then from there, just 
leaps and bounds once they realize, hey, if we put money into the costume department and not just put on like whatever ski suit and just spray paint a Captain America symbol on it, people will enjoy it. It, yes. it was still new. And we were still, we as the audience and the studios still burned out from films like Captain America and, you know, the like. Superhero films and Steel. Steel, for example, too. When did yeah. that come out, though? Steel came out in the late, mid-90s, I think. 93, 94, or something like that. But um, 97. What? Oh, my God. Anyways. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying, but I've seen people take like the original like stills from the original X-Men movie and X2 and even X-Men 3 and Photoshop their colors onto the costume, like make Cyclops' costume bluish with gold, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. put like Wolverine in his brown and tan or his uh, blue and gold costumes yeah. and all that. And it actually looked pretty good with the costume material that they had. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think if you'd have taken those costumes and made them a little more colorful, I think the audience would have been a little bit more receptive to it. I, I'm just saying that it was definitely a commentary as to, like, Fox was always so begrudging to put the X-Men in their bright, colorful costumes. They even walked it back in a movie. Remember, if you guys have seen the later films, like, at the end of Apocalypse, mm-hmm. Mystique walks into the danger room and all the X-Men that her and Charles have recruited are all wearing their costumes. They're like as accurate as they could get on the film. Like Nightcrawler's in his blue and red costume and Storm's in a white costume and Cyclops is wearing blue with gold trim and all that. Like they're wearing costumes that are very similar to their comic book costumes. And then Mm -hmm. at the beginning of the next film, which was Dark Phoenix, they're all back to wearing black. Mm Mm-hmm. And that kind of was like, I think the MCU and Raimi kind of, Raimi was the first, he was a pioneer. And then the MCU with Iron Man and Thor and Captain America were like the first ones to say like, we're making comic book movies and we're not ashamed to to admit that we're making comic book movies. Yeah, Mm. but also keep in mind too, even the early uh, Thor, they gave him his air quotes classic helmet, but it was literally for like a 30 second uh, scene in the first movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They were very good about like, giving them modern interpretations of their classic suits. And then they would kind of hint at uh, the older costumes, but they weren't ever like focal point of the, uh, yeah. And and Captain America is actually wearing his comic book outfit when he's doing the USO shows before he becomes Captain America, or I mean, before he becomes the, the hero Captain America. Like I get that. And I, and I'm okay with that. I was okay with Thor not wearing his helmet. Actually at the time that the Thor movie was made, Thor really wasn't wearing his helmet in the comics anymore. He looked more like the modern Thor. He, yeah, also, yeah. Doesn't have the, he also doesn't have the bright yellow boots in the movie either. Like, he had bright yellow boots for a long time in the yeah. comics. It's closer too. to the Ultimates Thor. Yeah. Than he was to, like, you know, the 616 Thor. Yeah. And, yeah. and Captain America's Avengers 1 costume is a little rough. Like, it has some... They, but they fixed it in Winter Soldier and Avengers 2, and it looks much better after that. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. 1940s costume was the best. Yeah, but I'm not saying disparaging the rest. They were all really good, with the exception of uh, Avengers movie and well, his USO tour one. But that one was supposed to be. Yeah, it was supposed corny. to look kind of yeah. ridiculous. It yeah. was supposed to look kind of corny. Yeah, like I'm just saying that I just like the commentary on Wolverine's outfit, the mm-hmm. meta commentary. It was like I didn't want anyone to think I actually wanted to be there, mm-hmm. which is kind of like it, the the stuff I read about Brian Singer when he was making the first couple X Men films was like he wouldn't let the actors read the comics at all. And he wouldn't let any comics on set, you know, which is why if you watch the movie carefully, Wolverine doesn't really say bub a lot in the first couple movies. He doesn't say, he says bub like once. And that's because Hugh Jackman ad-libbed it in and he kept ad-libbing it every take. Except for that one scene in X-Men Origins where he calls Blob bub and then he gets all pissed off because he called him Blob. He's like, no, uh, I said bub. Yeah, but that... Or- we, we don't talk Wolverine. about... War- yeah, we don't talk about Origins Wolverine. Yeah. That's the one disappointing thing, if I'm going to tangent real quick. Of all the Deadpool variants, we did not get to see Origins Wolverine Deadpool. And I think that was a missed opportunity. Yes, I agree. Just I agree. Worst Which- film ever now. Just negative 10 points. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I was kind of disappointed that they're in that big battle. We don't even see a cameo glimpse of X-Men Origins Deadpool. Even if he'd have just shown up for 10 seconds and gotten killed immediately. That would have been like, okay, that's good. Just to finish my thoughts, the movie it, was, it had some good moments in it. I liked some of the cameos. The cameos were a little fan servicey, but they also kind of Part of this movie warmed my heart a lot as I got to, to watch the end of it. It it really warmed my heart that the uh, movie was treated as kind of a both a goodbye 
and a love letter to the early 2000s era of comic book movies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those movies, while they're not probably the best, especially if you compare them to like phase one and two of the MCU, phase one and two of the MCU don't exist without Blade. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that oh, yeah. follows that yeah. rule. You know, it's like Blade made it very much a thing. Yeah. And, and yeah. same with the first X-Men movie. The first X-Men movie is 2000. Yep. You know, and then that kicked the door down for Spider-Man. And like I said, the movies themselves aren't great. Like Daredevil's not a great movie. No, like, no. But, but it's an important movie because like it, just, it, uh, it sets the stage for like what we eventually got with Endgame. You know what I mean? Like Endgame doesn't really exist without those movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like Endgame is only good because of the movies before it. But by itself, it's okay you know yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that was just my thing it was like it was kind of a love letter to the early 2000s era of comic book films but i i liked it i liked it some of the cameos were like some of them i didn't even i couldn't believe <laughs> like i could not believe um the one cameo that shocked me the most wasn't the one everyone talks about which is chris evans as cuban torch um no jennifer garner as electra oh yeah yeah just out of nowhere just whoa that one made me almost jump out of my seat because I'm like, I, I thought she had sworn off this particular genre of films forever. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And like they they managed to get her. Wow. They must have caught her on like a really good day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't follow her career all that closely, mostly because she stars in movies that I have no interest in seeing. Mm -hmm. But like she's pretty much views especially Electra. Now she had, she admits she had fun watching doing daredevil, but she, she doesn't speak very fondly of dare of Electra, like the film, like she didn't have a fun time making it. The movie opened up to abysmal reviews and mm -hmm. um, it's generally regarded as one of the worst comic book movies of all time. Um, Which I so, don't get. I've, I've seen it. It's, it's okay. It's, 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 not, it's not good, but it's like, it's definitely in the pantheon of bad superhero movies, but it's not the pinnacle. Yeah. 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 I agree with that assessment. Yeah, to me, Elektra is in, like, X-Men 3 territory. Like yeah. It's, it's like, okay, you've seen it, and it kind of entertains you a little bit while you're watching it, but you don't really remember any of the story beats about it, and you're not, yeah. in, you're not in any real hurry to watch it again. But, yeah, but she doesn't speak very fondly of it. So, and then she's sworn off ever coming to do it again. Like, she, I mean, I, I know they've since recast Elektra. They've recast Daredevil. Hell, they've rebooted everything. Mm -hmm. But she was told that, yeah, she's not kind of, she, she was done doing superhero films. She wasn't going to do any more. So, like. Oh, honestly, though, it, I don't think it surprised me as much. I honestly was more surprised to see Wesley Snipes' Blade than I was to see Jennifer that one, Garner. That one yeah. took me Because. I'll admit the uh, Chris Evans twist that he was actually Johnny Storm got me. Me too, yes. Like, because especially when they were teasing with the red, white, and blue uh, arm wraps and whatnot, and the way that they, like, literally hand-fed you that it was Captain America kind of got me. I will admit that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But seeing Blade walk in, knowing all of the shit that they went through, especially that line when Blade said, it's like, I don't like you, and he's like, I know or like you something never like have. that yeah, yeah, like yeah you yeah. never have so whatever it was but it's just like i honestly felt like the blade cameo was probably one of my favorite cameos because yes. knowing the history between the two of them like mm -hmm. i thought it would have just been even funner if you would have had uh who was it jessica beale's character there too yeah you know, that jessica that beale's character she, whistler's she was uh right? yeah oh, whistler's daughter yeah. from uh play trinity oh shit wow deep cut there josh i forgot about her entirely yeah because it's like i thought that would have been just hilarious um <laughs> to have her come in just even as an off role i thought that would have been funny because and honestly i could see why jennifer garner would do this one she's not asked to act to do another serious electra movie mm. but to come back is kind of like, a, oh, shit, you know, it's like, look at this. It's a uh, humorous uh, thing, you know. Yeah. You can still be badass, but it's in a funny scenario, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I was shocked to see Wesley Snipes as Blade, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jennifer Garner surprised me. Then when Wesley Snipes showed up, I'm like, what the fuck is this movie? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I mean. It really was like watching a band start playing their greatest hits and then like random other acts to start showing up and like, I didn't even know these two got along anymore. And now Steven Tyler. 
We're at blink. Why is Steven Tyler here? I'm I'm down for it, but this is yeah. just weird. <laughs> yeah, or like for those who are like heavy metal fans, like you're at a Metallica concert, and suddenly out of nowhere, Dave Mustaine comes out to want to play lead guitar again with them. You're like, wait, I didn't even think they got along anymore. <laughs> like I thought they hated each other. Yes. You know, so it's like amazing sometimes, it's like just to see that. And yeah, mm-hmm. Tom, you were Tom, you were getting ready to talk about Channing Tatum there for a second. Yeah, yeah, it's like of all the cuts to bring in, and yeah, we'll bring in Channing Tatum's Gambit. Let's see what this could have looked like, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna lie; I'm kind of glad they actually never went through with that. That that voice works for the cartoon. I got real tired of that Cajun accent real quick. Yeah. I think they leaned into it. Though. I think they honestly, did too. they leaned into that one. I don't think it would have been that bad. Truthfully, I felt like his costume was like almost in. Oh, it was like, comic book perfect. It I was, was, but I was just like, head, dude. He even had like the head, the half mask head wrap. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was like straight out of the 97, uh, X Men 97. Yeah. But yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. all like, how does he back up his car? <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, I was thinking that too. I was like, how does, yeah, how does he do, He can't move his head. There's no way he's a guy who moves his head. You know, and he this costume predates backup cameras, so he yeah. doesn't. Have, he wouldn't have that on his car. Yeah, but I like seeing him, and I like seeing him finally get a fair shake as Gambit. Overall, I enjoyed the movie. Like, I thought that it was fun, but um, I'm comparing it to Avatar only in that, like, I've spoken a lot before about how Avatar has a very simple story, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's everything else about the movie that kind of makes it good. Mm-hmm. Like, the story was fairly, you know, whatever. It especially got really cliched towards the end, especially whenever, you know, Xavier's twin sister decided she wants to destroy all of the multiverse. I'm like... Yeah, didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, that was an incredibly cliched ending, but at the same time, it's like, you don't give a fuck about that plot of it. You just want to see Hugh Jackman's abs. <laughs> wow, guys. Wow. Yeah. But it's like, it was funny. And I got to admit, watching Deadpool and Wolverine, you know, mow through all of the Deadpools, I'm just all like, I never knew that I've waited this long to be able to see this one scene. It's just like, you're watching it and you're like, Wolverine's in his mask. This is what I've been waiting for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, did you uh, go back through and read like the uh, credits of all the people that were the other Deadpool's and just some of the names they got to get behind those masks? Yeah, Nathan Fillion, Matthew McConaughey, uh, Blake Lively, which is his wife. Um, his daughter was the young dead or the kid Deadpool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, what were some of the others? I, I'd have to go back through and look. Some of them were just like. It's just Matthew McConaughey as Cowboy Wolverine. Or it's Cowboy or Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah, just it's one just, line is all he had, too. You don't even see who they are. They just say something. And, and no, I love that, too. So carry on. I didn't mean to interrupt you on that one. Just the, the small things like that. Oh, yeah. And that's the, the entire movie, too. Like, when I remember when that was happening during the writer's strike and it came down that uh, they weren't allowed to improv as much as they had in previous ones. I was a little worried about that. And you could kind of feel it in scenes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, it felt a little, like, by the script. Like, it was a lot of fun. And I think, like, if you compared uh, plot to each of them, I think Deadpool 1 wins that one. Mm-hmm, if you mm-hmm. uh, appreciated the fourth wall breaking... I would almost say Deadpool 2 or even this one would take the cake on that one. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like it was solid and I'm not disparaging the film at all. It was a great film. I had a blast watching it. But I go back and I'm like, did I like Twisters more? (laughs) I think I enjoyed Twisters more for the same reason that I enjoyed a couple years ago, I really enjoyed Top Gun Maverick. And for the, also the same reason why I think Barbie and Oppenheimer did so well last summer. They're not comic book films. They're not that's, comic like, that, that's the thing. Like, I, uh, what do we call it? Cape Fatigue. Um, yeah. What was the last Marvel movie? I haven't seen any of the uh, TV shows since... Fuck, I don't even remember. The last Marvel movie I saw in the theaters was Spider-Man No Way Home. I didn't see Doctor Strange 2. I didn't. I could have swore you were there when we watched uh, Multiverse of Madness. No, because I'd, I'd be actually more pissed at that film than if I'd, if I'd have actually spent money on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that movie twice, and that just made me even more pissed off. Jesus Christ, it's like two more times than anyone should ever have to see it. Oh, dude, I didn't even rewatch it when it came on streaming. Yeah, although the, some YouTube channel, and I don't know who it is, I can't plug them right now, but they got a t-shirt. It's a it's supposed to be a uh, 
like a choose your own adventure or a Dun- Dungeons and Dragons kind of a situation. It's a picture of Wanda standing in front of Reed Richards, Black Bolt, Captain Marvel, and Captain Britain. Mm-hmm. And it says, Reed Richards, do you kill Scarlet Witch or do you tell her everyone's weakness? And it's like, <laughs> roll for that. <laughs> like, roll for that. <laughs> All right, we are getting kind of off topic for yeah. talking about. Yeah, we're going to talk about Deadpool, Deadpool and Wolverine, and Tom hasn't gotten to his uh, what he thought about it yet either. Oh, okay. Yeah, like okay. I was just saying, like in terms of we were talking about going to the theaters and watching them. Looking at Phase Four, you had Shang Chi, Eternals, Spider Man, Multiverse of Madness, Thor: Love and Thunder, and Wakanda Forever. Mm-hmm, Shang Chi mm-hmm. and No Way Home; those are the only two decent movies. No Way Home was, I don't know, that one was kind of like mm-hmm. at the time it was easily S tier. But looking back on it, it was kind of, you know, member Barry's hand wanky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deadpool and Wolverine kind of like to try to bring in that actual movie we're supposed to be talking about kind of was a a little hand wanky, but not like cause chafing wanking. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but so far out of phase five, there's two movies that I've liked, but we still have two to go. Deadpool and Wolverine, I thought, did a decent job. I felt like it was like a solid eight, eight and a half out of ten. Thompson, what about you? What was your uh, thoughts on the film? It's what I expected. Mm-hmm. Fair. That's well, a good way to put it. I, I, I kind of thought I, I had the same similar thought, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't build upon anything that they haven't done twice already. It wasn't edgier. It wasn't more insightful. It. It gave me what I wanted, but it only gave me what I wanted. It didn't really go out of its way. It's, I'm trying to think of a band of, it's Hootie and the Blowfish. It's Hootie and the Blowfish. They had the, they had that great album and their follow-up album's like, okay, it's kind of the same stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. It's Offspring. That's what it is. This is Offspring. The Deadpool movies have been Offspring. This to, is just the latest uh, Offspring album. And yeah, I like Offspring. Back in the 90s, early odds, Offspring was great. But every Offspring album is just an Offspring album. It's done nothing new for the past 20 plus years. Deadpool movies, we're at the third one. And it's like, okay, cool. All right. Good job, Offspring. Now I can move on. I don't, I don't, I'm not wowed by you. I'm not going to listen to you again. That's this film. I'm not going to watch it again. I saw it. I enjoyed what I saw. It was fine. The the callbacks were fine. The little, like, you know, they brought in some of the, um, the old Fox comic book movies characters. Channing Tatum was nice, but we, we were talking about costumes and such and how, like, Fox was, wasn't brave enough to make them colorful. Um, you're looking at that costume, looking at the Channing Tatum Gambit costume, I can see why. Because that's kind of what they would have looked like back then. And I don't think your casual fan would have uh, would have been as wowed by it as us nerds would have been. The Wolverine costume was pretty all right. I've seen better at anime conventions um, and comic book conventions. I don't really liking modern, modern Jiminy Christmas, their latest crop of comic book or superhero costumes in films. They seem kind of frumpy. There's not that form fitting factor anymore like you saw before. It's something about it. It's just, it doesn't look right. It looks comfortable. It looks a lot more comfortable than they have in the past, but it just doesn't look Right. Deadpool, spot on. I can't say anything wrong about the performance. Ryan Reynolds was Ryan Reynolds, um, and he's been Deadpool since he started playing Deadpool. Proud of him. Actually, I would I would argue that Ryan Reynolds has been playing Deadpool since he was cast as Hannibal King in the Blade 3 movie. That's, that's, that's accurate. That is 100% accurate. He's been auditioning for that role since... Van Wilder, pretty much. But again, I can't get fault the performances. I'm a little vexed that the plot was just reasons for things to happen. It's like, oh, your world's going to be destroyed and, you know, Deadpool needs to be validated and everything else. And his relationship was over before the beginning of the movie. 
didn't he like the whole second movie he had to rewrite space and time to make sure his girlfriend fiance wife did they ever get married i can't remember but he did all this stuff the crux of the whole film was him missing her and he had to bring her back and then before the beginning of this film they've broken up off screen why there was no point to that i uh, i'm now i'm nitpicking on some of it it was fine It was okay. I got the action stuff. The stabbing was fine. I got really annoyed by the 15th time they did it of the slow walking when Wolverine and Deadpool are like walking in lockstep in slow motion. And I can't remember the song that they kept playing over and over again. Every Madonna, time. like a prayer. Yeah, it's like, I get it. We did it too for our podcast, but we only did it the one time. Quit hammering it home, guys. Just stop it. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. It, it was, the joke was getting a little played out by the end yeah. of the film. I did like... I mean, they had the Deadpool core at the end. That was just like your obligatory. And here's all the variants of Deadpool. But it wasn't like with Loki or um, No Way Home or anything else like that, where they had to go back and bring in all the variants to be like Team Deadpool to help them out. With the exception of Nice Pool, who the internet pointed out there was a missed opportunity of having Nice Pool played by Ryan Gosling. <laughs> That would have been good. That would have been good. And in hindsight, it's like that should have been the way it went. But I like that they avoided that. They just went and just like, okay, here's all the Deadpools. And we're just going to kill them off. It's obligatory. It's out of the way. They didn't have to bring in the variant Wolverines either. You didn't have them teaming up with Patch Wolverine or <laughs> comic book accurate size Wolverine. <laughs> that was five, good. Five foot three Wolverine. <laughs> Cavalry, the cavalry. Although weirdly yeah. enough, the internet's get weirdly pissy about that one. I don't get it. Which is weird because that whole cameo is because of internet wants Cavill to be the next Wolverine. That that, that was the whole thing for like a year or two. When it, when well, no, it started around the time James Gunn started running the DC movie universe. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they announced that Cavill's not going to be Superman anymore. So a lot of MCU stands and a lot of MCU fans on like Reddit and other forums were like fantasy casting Cavill as Wolverine because they're like he'd be the perfect Wolverine because he's he can do the gruff voice really well. He's also mm-hmm. built he's built like a Mack truck. Yeah. Um, and you know he'd be great as Wolverine. And then they put him in this movie as either a cameo or as some people are speculating a possible appetizer for him to be the next Wolverine and the fans are suddenly getting pissy about it. Why? Yeah. I haven't heard any doubt or anything about them not liking it. It's a small, but very vocal minority of internet fans that are just getting a little pissy with Um, Cavill being. No, no, I haven't run across anybody online at least talking negative about the Cavill appearance. We all loved it when we were talking about it at work. We were like, yeah, it it was funny. It was tongue in cheek, but of course, internet has to take a funny thing and just kind of ruin the fun of it. It's just one of those things. Yeah, I think yeah. it's just one. Of, if people are bitching about it, then they just need to shut up. Because <laughs> even if he does make it or if he doesn't make it, I don't know. I don't really mm-hmm. care. Remember all the uh, shit that Hugh Jackman got when he first took on Roll Wolverine? Oh, yeah, because he's too tall. Yeah, well, I no, like that. Literally a story that I heard him tell was he went to a con one time dressed in costume. Mm-hmm. This is before he was really well known, but he went dressed in costume. And I don't know if this was before or immediately after. It was around the time the first movie was released. Mm-hmm. And the first thing is like he came across this guy and the guy just kind of looked at him and he's just like too tall and then just walked off. <laughs> Comic book fans aren't petty at all. Yeah, I remember um, one of the magazines at the time when the first X-Men movie was being cast and Hugh Jackman had been cast. And one of the arguments about against Hugh Jackman is he's not hairy enough because in the comics, Wolverine actually has like a lot of body hair. Yeah. And because, yeah, he does, he's got like hairy arms and hairy chest. But he's usually sometimes drawn with a hairy back and all that. Mm-hmm. And you're like, he's not, he's not hairy enough yet. And you're like, it's called acting people. <laughs> like, also, as Wolverine, he's going to be in costume most of the time. So it doesn't really matter if he has a hairy chest or not. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But like, what is, what is wrong with people? But then again, even before the internet, they shit all over Michael Keaton as Batman back in the day. Oh, so, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Median as Batman? Heath yeah. Ledger? Oh, I yeah, remember those. Yeah, yeah those. they should have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the gay cowboy is going to be Joker. And they're like, it's called acting. 
Yeah. The only exception to that was um, Jared Leto. That was justified. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah. We were proven right for if anything. A- we didn't hate on that one enough. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But we're digressing a little bit. I, I also like some of the um, the small little things they threw in there. Not just like when they're in the wastelands, you see like the devastated fox logo in the desert. But some of the things like when they go meet Nice Pool, they meet him in the cornfield. Those who remember like um, Twilight Zone and also Treehouse of Horrors, like the kid doesn't like someone, he sends him to the cornfield. That's oh, I get what they did there. And they wound up in the forest of Vancouver since they were no longer filming in Vancouver anymore. It's like, ah, oh, they also sent Vancouver, Canada to um, the wasteland because Disney doesn't need it anymore. It's like, yeah. oh, I, I see what you're doing there. That's clever. And Jennifer Garner's little thing and Deadpool says like, uh, I'm I'm so sorry about Daredevil dying. She's like, I'm not. It's like, oh, oh my. Because she divorced him. <laughs> no, she, was, she, was, she didn't say I'm not. She just was like, it's fine. Oh, that's right. It's fine. Yeah, she's so. like, she's like, yeah, Cassandra killed my Daredevil. And you're like, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. She goes, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, that was funny as shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like tongue in cheek, like, no, no, we're good. Yeah, I appreciated that. It wasn't like, yeah. as you also, said. Also, another deep cut, the very beginning of the film, mm-hmm. the song of choice is in sings Bye Bye Bye. Oh my God, yeah. that was okay. beautiful. Yeah. That song came out in 2000 and it only came out a few months before the X-Men movie was released. And the X-Men movie is considered the start of the MCU. Mm-hmm. So, you know. But you know the, the joke on that one too, X-Men 2 there's the scene where um, they're driving, Wolverine's driving, and then they turn on the radio and Bye 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 turns on and he immediately shuts it off. Yes, because they're driving Scott's car. They're driving Cyclops. Yeah. Oh, man. That, that is a deep cut. Wow. Okay, I might have to rewatch the film again just to see. No, there's the thing is there. Th- this movie warrants multiple rewatches just for like the side shit, like watching. Like I didn't get a chance to watch all the TVA monitors. Um, oh, there's yeah. gonna be a ton of shit in there that you just you know you miss. Yeah, the story's light, but there's a lot to enjoy. Yeah, with and that's why I said it was a good movie. But it's like uh, like Fight Club was very. Mm-hmm. It was great the first time you watched it, but it was still great subsequent watching because you always see something different every yeah. time you watch I, it. Making making another food reference, everyone take a drink here. But to me, this movie was like the main dish wasn't all that great, but the side dishes were awesome. Oh yeah, ah. you know, so, yeah, you know, burger was mid, but god damn, that place has got some good fries. You know, ah. so you know, <laughs> it's rallies. Holy shit, this movie's rallies. Wow, no one, never, no one knows anything about rallies except the fries. <laughs> Their fries are really good, but their burgers are like, eh, yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah, they're, they're all right. I've said all I can say. I've got my complaints, but it's fine enough that I don't hate it. I was glad I saw it in theaters. Some other films I've seen, I wish I hadn't. Yeah, and me too. I, From the sounds of it, I do need to see it again to see what I've missed. But just talking about that, the attention to detail they put into this, aside from like the Liefeld cleaners in the background when they were fighting in no, downtown. The, the leaf, Liefeld's just feet. Because <laughs> no, you can't... Yeah, because it's supposed to be a shoe store, but it says Liefeld's je, or Liefeld's just feet, and it's like a shoe store. It's, it's, a, it's a guy, because the guy can't draw feet to save his life. <laughs> As someone who read the comics religiously in the 90s, almost all the X comics, X-Men, X-Force, X-Factor, all of them, Liefeld was a huge artist in the 90s of that era, and he's one of the creators of Deadpool. He was one of the, one of the guys that you think of like, when you think of like '90s extreme characters, like the extreme, uh, you know, yep, pal- yep. Yeah. the guns, guns, and guns pouches, and guns and pouches on top of pouches, and women impossibly thin with proportions that do not make yeah. an anatomical sense. But he had men that didn't make any anatomical sense. Look at his drawing of Captain America from the Heroes Reborn universe. Like a human, a human being could not look like that and actually be able to move around as a person, <laughs> even if they are injected with super soldier serum. He'd be just not able to do anything but my like, bones well, my bones cannot support my muscly frame yeah. but but one of his big things is he can't draw feet he can't draw he doesn't draw hands very well either which is why every time he draws a character they're always holding a weapon or something in their hand yeah. because he can't he can't draw fingers he can't draw toes he can't draw feet he can't draw hands he cannot draw extremities to save his life <laughs> and that was the joke was life fields just feet and it's a shoe store and all that so it's like i never saw the rest of that sign i just saw life elves and there were like explosions oh it's life oh i get that reference i never saw the rest oh yeah. my god 
Okay. Yeah, I don't think I got that reference. Yeah. But do you guys think this film will get better after subsequent watchings or benefits from additional watches? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, no, there I, think was... would, I think it would definitely benefit from multiple watches. Yeah. Honestly, my favorite part of the movie was the fact that I made the right choice buying a Honda Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm quoting Deadpool, the Honda Odyssey fucks. <laughs> I was almost offended at the beginning of the movie when he was talking shit, and I'm all like, well, fuck you. <laughs> Honda got their money's worth from that product placement. I don't know how much they got paid for that because he talked shit on them for like quite a bit. But no, the Honda Odyssey fucks. You can have an entire superhero battle in that car. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I enjoyed the movie. I'm looking forward to watching it again. Yeah, I actually, when I saw it, I, I was I was thinking when I watched it, I was like, I can't wait for this to come out on Disney Plus, only so that I can rewind it and go back and see some stuff. So. Yeah. I say, I'm set to watch it again later on this week, so I'll let you guys know if it does get better after the second time, or if it's like Civil War and you just go, I need another beer, and just spend <laughs> like half the film at the bar not watching the film. See, I don't hate Civil War like that. It's my least favorite Captain America film out of the three. But I thought it was a better Avengers sequel than Avengers 2. Oh, so, Age of Ultron? Bar. Bar. Yeah. No low bar. Yeah. And it's not that I hated it. It's just I wasn't like, oh, this scene's about to start. I got to get back in there and watch that. Yeah, I legitimately think Civil War would have been better if they had not spoiled the Spider-Man reveal in the trailers. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I'm glad I saw the film when I did because when we all hung out, before, you know, at your party recently, Josh and Gino and them were like, oh, yeah, and I can't believe X showed up and Y showed up. It's like, don't tell everyone about this. I'm I, so I was- glad. I'm so glad I wasn't in the room when Gino was blabbering on the spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. I think he spoiled Blade and Electra for me. No, he told me something. It's just like I've heard rumors about Blade. So I was kind of expecting Blade. I did not hear any rumors. I, knew I heard rumors about Blade, but I thought it was going to be the new Blade. <laughs> There's only one Blade. Yeah. <laughs> you sure about that, buddy? The only other person to kind of break the fourth wall? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I guess it, the movie's still out in theaters, so we actually might be able to influence one or two other people. Would you guys recommend seeing the film in theaters, or should they just wait till it comes to streaming? I honestly like the movie. I think that I would definitely recommend people go see it in theaters. I thought it was uh, solid. And I don't think you're going to be missing much not seeing it in theaters, if that's your thing. But it was a fun experience. Yeah. Nigel? You know, I think it's one of those movies that you should go experience in theaters. Even if you already know all the spoilers now. If you've listened to this episode all the way up through and you've gotten all the spoilers and now, you're like, okay, we're not going to be surprised by anybody. Go just to see like some of these big fight scenes and stuff on that big screen. Mm -hmm. It was kind of cool. While I didn't think the costume was all that great, it was kind of cool seeing Channing Tatum finally get to be Gambit because that's that's been a rumor since like 2005. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to slightly diverge. If you're going to see it in theaters, see it with a friend. Um, Someone that can also, you can just like geek out with them. You can like pick out the stuff that... Honestly, I completely missed. And had you guys been there, you would have pointed out. And just be able to appreciate the callbacks and little touches. But honestly, you're not going to miss anything by not seeing it in theaters. Except for the action scenes, because those are badass on a big screen. Yeah, um, I mean, you if you have a really good uh, theater system at your house, you're not going to miss much out of it. Yeah. It's a solid film. Of the uh, Marvel films lately that I've seen... Mm-hmm. This is one of the few I would, I'm glad I got to see in theaters. But it's not like I saw the original Star Wars in theaters feeling. You know, it's no, like, no. not watching it in theaters isn't going to be like, fuck, I didn't get to see that in theaters. The Matrix would be another good one. It's like, I'm glad I got to see yeah. that one in theaters. Avengers yeah. Endgame. Yeah. One of those, like, oh, I'm glad I got to see that in theaters, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, this yeah. one, if you, I mean, if you really do miss it in theaters and wait till it comes out on Disney Plus, I mean, nobody's going to be like, oh, you should have seen it in theaters. No. It's a high-end laundry folding film. Yeah, and and honestly, for me, too, for me, I just appreciated the nostalgia that wasn't overly done. It wasn't like a barrage of machine gun member berries throughout the whole film. No. Like, (laughs) it was a definite love letter and kind of a fond goodbye to the 2000s era of comic book films. Because, honestly, without Blade, without X-Men, even without Daredevil, the MCU is not really possible. Mm. So do we have them to thank or do we have them to blame? 
that remains to be seen how badly they can or how well they can course correct with uh, <laughs> a phase five and six. Hmm. Uh, Spoiler alert, not well. Yeah. Obviously, everyone's talking about Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom now. Uh, and all I saw, the picture of him on the stage with his arms outstretched. And it's a Marvel line, but all I think is Thanos going, you could not live with your own failure. So where did that bring you? Back to me. <laughs> <laughs> you either die the hero or live long enough to become the villain. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Hey! Yeah. I don't know. And I don't know if this was the plan all along to have Downey be... Doctor Doom. I actually have a theory about that, but I don't think it was planned. Oh no, no, this was definitely. See, I I don't know. I think at the end of Kang Dynasty, because that's when Doom was supposed to be introduced, was at the end of Kang Dynasty. I think one of the Kangs was going to have Iron Man's face, and I think that that would have thrown some characters for a loop. But I don't know if this was the plan all along. I think this is a hail mary pass. Yeah, so... yeah. Majors, um, the guy that played Kang, and all of his legal stuff yeah they're kind of like oh shit well we could just recast them or because honestly tangent here they fucked up kang they ruined him in this first big debut going back to marvel phase one and phase whatever phase two and all that thanos is introduced in avengers one as, mm-hmm. a, cameo, as a cameo and then the rest of the other big mcu films keep making references to thanos and how dangerous and how powerful he is teasing him then, out yeah te- yeah kept teasing him out then when thanos is finally properly introduced to the audience in avengers infinity war he kills a god and he humbles the hulk oh mm. yeah immediately establishes that yes this guy is the genuine article and he is just as powerful as all these other characters have made him out to be so what do they do with kang they introduced Kang in Quantumania. I know they introduced him in Loki, but nobody watched it. They introduced Kang in Quantumania. The whole movie, what's her name, is telling everybody how dangerous he is, how terrible he is. He even has lines in the movie like, oh, I've killed so many Avengers. I just, all the faces blend together. What happens? Ant-Man kills him in a one-on-one combat fight. Really? Honestly, like, if you really want to establish Kang as a genuine threat, he should have killed Ant-Man. Yeah, seriously. He should have killed, killed an Avenger. When he said... Yeah, because at that point, you're like, oh, Ant-Man could beat him. Nobody else is going to... Exactly. Argue. Like, Ant-Man can beat him, so he's going to be no sweat for Captain Marvel. Yeah, this is some Vince McMahon level of booking here. Got this great heel. Let's have him lose in his first match. I'm just saying, like, even without the legal stuff, even if Jonathan Majors hadn't gotten in any trouble at all, Kang was ruined from the end credits of Quantumania. Oh yeah, they introduced him way too early. They introduced mm-hmm. him too early and he's killed by fucking Ant-Man. I'm just saying, he should have actually killed an Avenger, which is what I thought they were building towards in the movie. That that would have taken balls and Disney yeah, yeah. does not have the balls. Yeah. No. And that's tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on firepitpodcast.com. There are links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, wherever fine podcasts are sold, bartered, or traded. Our regular episodes are... We don't have regular episodes anymore. This is just a script I'm reading off of. Uh, But (laughs) please like and subscribe, whatever medium you choose. We really appreciate it as it uh, helps us out. And please leave a review for our podcast. You never know. It might be the best two years of your life. (laughs) And also be sure to join our Discord channel as well. The link can be found in this episode's description at discord.me slash fire pit there you'll get notifications of new episodes and even better you can engage in discussion with other fans of the show and maybe if we ever get on there us yes you can also email us at curtain call entertainment inc at gmail.com you can look at our page and check our links to facebook twitter not calling it x at fire pit cce we don't do anything on there both linked in the episode's description as well so shout outs Nigel, do you have any? Oh, you know, Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. She was asking me tonight on the way home from work what I was getting into. And I said, oh, I'm recording an episode for the podcast. And she was super excited. So, yeah, I'll shout out them. Shout out to uh, longtime listener Rob. I know we mentioned it in the last episode we did, Masters of the Universe. But um, he should be expecting his new baby any time now, I think. I think they're eight or seven to nine months along, so I'm sure that baby's due any moment now. So, yeah, have fun with that. Get your sleep while you can there, Rob. Yeah. <laughs>
So yeah, but congrats, Rob. Also, he uh, he got a newish job, not recently, but like a few months ago. I didn't know when I did the uh, last shout out that he had got a new job. So congrats, Rob. I hope it's better than the last one. So nice. Congrats to longtime listener Rob. Seems like he's uh, pulling up aces right now, and that's that's always happy to hear. Nice. Similarly, I'm also going to start off by uh, shouting out some of our followers. We're getting up there in the numbers, surprisingly enough, despite having been gone for two some years. But some of our newer followers, Simon Owen and Stiff Zombie, um, just want to thank you for joining and listening. If you're even listening right now or just trying to catch up on the backlog. Personal notes, I want to shout out a friend of mine, Esri, who is going to be leaving our glorious state of Ohio for greener pastures in Philadelphia. They got a government job now. They'll be working for the system. So congratulations, Esri. You don't listen to the podcast, but one day you might. So this shout out's for you. It's going to have all the time in the world now. Yes, they are. Oh, and also to my um, cousin, you know, we're doing baby shout outs, are expecting a child as well, which is due around New Year's because they can't do anything subtle. So congratulations to them as well. And I would like to shout out, he's been shouted out before on this podcast, Pod Diddy, because he left us a review on iTunes again. So unless Tom edited this in because we already discussed this and ruining my shout out because pod diddy i guess he removed his old review that he left us but we have a new one it was titled fungus for your ear holes it's been on hiatus for two years now it's back it was the best two years of my life five stars now what he not clarified in the review and we understand you probably wrote it in a hurry um but um he meant the first two years of the podcast were the best two years of his life not the two sure. years hiatus. <laughs> yeah that clearly he yeah 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 he clearly, yeah, he, he, clearly, clearly. Meant, he did he did he just you yeah know, he, it, it, it's easy to read between the lines guys i mean if you just like you know squint hard and turn your head to the side you can clearly see that he is is talking about you know the first two years of the podcast were the best two years of his life. And now he's he's excited we're back. He's excited we're back. And we are back. We're not as regular as we used to be, but, you know. The <laughs> when you get to is, our age, who is? I mean, come on. You know. That's what fiber's for. Yeah. No, he's just happy we're back. Um, it was the best two years of his life. And, you know, thanks for leaving a review. Whether you love us or hate us, thanks for leaving a review. So, Beautiful Disney filter, Dan. Beautiful Disney filter. Yep. I didn't. We appreciate what, it. What did I do? Thank you. So, anywho, what are we doing next month or two, guys? Uh, well, I believe we got a selection section we got to get to because we've just wrapped up a destination a month ago. We've got to get back on the road, gentlemen. We got to scour the multiverse for variants and anchor beings and whatever other concepts are going to introduce in the next one. So, yeah, we, we need to we need to find a good candidate for our next journey. Yeah. So, spoiler alerts: We're not doing another uh, whistle stop campaign trail. We've yeah. just decided that we don't have the energy. Yeah, let, us, yeah. let us be your break from politics. Okay? Yes. Yes. God knows we're gonna need them. So. <laughs> so yeah, that's so, yeah. what we've got. I'm hope <laughs> that you are enjoying the new format yeah. podcast. Stay Dan tuned. Talking. <laughs> John. Josh's game has been on point today. Yeah, this been, is this I'm, has been A plus material here. Yeah, I've been. I'm sorry, Josh. Go ahead, sir. This is a Wendy's. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Just stay tuned. Selection section number. What number would it be? Oh, um, 14? I think 13, it is. 14? Yeah, 13 14. Or 14? 14, because one of them got erased forever, and it was the best one ever. But, yeah, because um, we had 12, and then yeah. 13, and then now we're on 14. Yeah. So <gasps> Josh tuned. has learned numbers, Dan. He's figuring out counting now. Well, no, we've established. It's canon. It's it's universal canon that Josh knows numbers. He doesn't know how to read. Oh, that's right. That's right. He can count. Yeah. He, can count. he can't read. Yeah. Well, I'm the opposite. Know. I can read. I can't count. And I can't do either. So order is restored. Yes. Yes, so, the, multi, the multiverse has been stabilized. No, stay tuned. Selection section 14 will be coming out hopefully soon. We think you guys will be pleased with our next destination film. And I'm sure because of our new format, the journey will be an absolute blast. So thank you very much for listening. I've been Dan. I've been Tom. And I've been Josh. Thank you for listening. 
This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. says thank you for listening thank you for listening tom edit that in (laughs) curtain call entertainment inc at gmail.com i've been josh (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna have to start scripting the outro too (laughs) i just no idea what we're doing